Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to generate multiple images using stable diffusion. Then we're going to organize those images using an Excel spreadsheet. There are many ways to generate multiple images, but when we generate a lot of them, it becomes difficult to match the prompts with the images. With the method I'm going to show you, we will generate a table that shows both the prompts and images side by side in an Excel spreadsheet. Each row has a different prompt, and in each column, we'll use the same text prompt, but with a different random seed to ensure unique pictures. This way, if we see an image that we like, we'll know the prompt and the seed right away. We will be storing all the prompts inside the CSV file. For demonstration purposes, we'll only show three prompts, but you can add whatever number of prompts you like into the CSV file. And for this tutorial, we'll be using the original stable diffusion code if you need help with installing Stable Diffusion, check out this video here. On top of that, we also need two other libraries, Endless and Excel Wings, for working with Excel spreadsheets. We will install these libraries into the same environment as the Stable Diffusion. If you followed my Stable Diffusion installation videos, then for NVIDIA card, the virtual environment name is LDM, and for AMD cards, the virtual environment name is AMD underscore VM. Make sure that you install Pandas and Excel Wing libraries into the correct virtual environment. So to install these libraries, simply type PIP install followed by the library name Pandas Excel Wings. If you are using a virtual environment, just make sure that you are in the same virtual environment as your stable diffusion. Then hit enter. I've already have these libraries installed, so this will not do anything on my site. The original stable diffusion code is pretty much a command line tool, which means that we can type a command in the command prompt or terminal and then run the software to generate images. This is an easy way to use the software, but if we want to generate multiple images at once, we'll have to custom build our own code. You can find link to the code in the video description below. We will start by making a copy of the text to image.py file and then we'll remove the code that we don't need while adding some custom code to fit our need to efficiently generate multiple images. Let's take a look at the code structure first. So this is the original text to image.py file. On the top, there are a couple of helper functions. If we scroll down, then this main function contains all the good stuff. All these lines, add arguments are for the command line input argument, which we don't need for our purpose. So we will just delete these code later. And let's keep scrolling down until we see this section here with torch.nograd. So this part is where the magic happens. And the rest of this code actually handles other optional command line arguments that we can pass into the program. For example, if we want to skip saving the file or if we want to produce a picture grid, etc. And we'll be removing all these stuff. So now we have a rough understanding of the text to image code structure and let's begin to modify the code. So here I have a copy of the code that I already modified and We'll be walking through all the changes I made. So we will be keeping all these import at the beginning of this file. And we'll also be keeping all these helper functions. And we will start off by creating a class called SD, stands for Stable Diffusion. And then we'll actually be transferring all these command line arguments into the SD class attributes. For convenience, we'll also be giving some of the attributes default values. For example, the height, width, and the height of the images will be 512 by 512, and we'll be running 50 inference steps, etc. We'll also be setting both the n either and then the n samples to 1, as some of us don't have a high-end GPU and won't be able to run two samples at the same time. Once we're done initializing the SD class, we will remove all these command line input from the code, and then we'll be writing a function or a method called make image, which will take three arguments, the text prompt, the file name that we're going to use for saving the image to the disk, and also the seed. So this make image function, this is really just a modification of the original code, roughly this part. The reason is because instead of putting everything inside the main function, we want to have a method that actually handles the image generation. So that later on, once we create this SD class, we'll be able to call this method function to generate multiple images in a loop. And another minor tweak I made was removing the not safe for work filter. So basically this function here checks if the image contain any not safe for work content. If it does, then stable diffusion will just return a replacement picture of Rick and this is the function to blame. So to disable this filter, simply just remove this line of code like what I did over here in this new code. 
this will basically skip the checking step and returns whatever images that Stable Diffusion decides to generate. And then this final part will generate the image and then save to disk using the file name that we provided. If I'm going too fast, you can find the link to the code in the description below. All right, now it's the time to test our modified Stable Diffusion code. Let's write two lines of code at the end of the file and then try to run this file to see if we made any errors. So the first line is we're basically instantiating a Stable diffusion class or object and then we're calling the make image method i'm gonna save the file and run it so the picture is ready and let's just take a look here we go this is our astronaut.png it looks like our code is working so let's keep going and now we have this sd class ready let's start a new script for generating multiple images so in this new script we'll be importing pandas and excel wings library into here and we'll also need to import that sd class that we just wrote finally we'll also be importing the random library for generating random seed numbers next we'll load the prompts from the csv file and then run them one after another in the loop to import the csv file we'll need to use the pandas library and if you haven't installed it already simply type pip install pandas in your command prompt this pd.read csv will basically read all the content inside the csv file into python and this image files url this is basically where we will be saving our images here i'm just instantiating the sd object then we can write the loop to go through all the prompts for this demonstration we'll have three different prompts and then for each prompt let's create three different images so in total we'll have three by three nine pictures in total i have two counters here r stands for row c stands for column so so basically these are referring to the excel rows and columns and the reason that we start from the number two for both is because we want to start from cell b2 which is row two and then column two because we are reserving cell a1 for the header prompt and in order to save the images i'm using a simple naming convention basically we want these images to be shown as a grid inside excel so the first image here i'm gonna name it 22 which stands for row two, column two. And the second image here, I'm going to name it three, two, which stands for row three and column two. Similarly for this image here, I'm going to name it three, three, which stands for row three and column three. That's basically what this loop does. It will start from row two, column two. As we loop through each prompt and each seed, we will be adding one to the counter to increment to the next row and next column. And now we have this loop. So in order to place the images into Excel spreadsheet, we'll have to use the Excel wings library. Basically the way to use it is we have to instantiate an Excel wings object, and then we can actually manipulate the whole Excel workbook using Excel wings library. Inside the loop, as we create each image, we'll also be writing the seed number into each corresponding cell using the Excel Wings library. And then we'll be adding the picture that we saved to disk into that cell. The left and the top arguments here just refers to where do we want to put the image to. So these are the left top corner of the starting point for the image. And the scale is basically we want to scale the picture down to 30% so that we can fit within the cell. And last but not least, we want to save this Excel spreadsheet once the run is done. So this is the code for the NVIDIA graphic card. And next, let's take a look at how to write the custom code for AMD card. So first of all, you have to install a different set of code for Stable Diffusion if you are using AMD card. And because the code that we just walked through only works with NVIDIA. So to get the Stable Diffusion code for AMD, check out this video here. And once you follow the steps in that video and install the code, come back to here. So the AMD code is not a command line input tool and we just need to make a few changes. It's actually easier to make changes on the AMD side. Essentially, this line of code will load the stable diffusion model into a pipeline object, which will stay inside the computer memory until we close down Python. So we can use this pipeline object to run multiple prompts over and over without needing to reload the model each time. The previous code we wrote for the Excel and loop are still valid, so we can reuse them and only different part is the code for generating images. So the first line here, we want to set a random seed for each image generation. And then this line will generate an image using the given prompt. And the third line here will save the image into a file. We'll be using the same naming convention as before, the row number and column numbers. And the rest of the code is how we interact with Excel. So that shouldn't change either. This is how you can generate multiple images while keeping track of everything and organizing them nicely inside 
inside Excel spreadsheet. Hope you liked the video. If you find it helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.